Thanks so much. Morning. Hi there. Good morning. Good morning again. Hi. Right. Good to see you. <laughs> Alan, the truck has got us blocked. Yeah, the truck's supposed to be broke down. You they said can't get it started. They can't get the truck started? No. So they got mechanics working on it. Do you believe that? or? Oh, do I believe it? Well, they tried starting it. It wouldn't run. Uh, what they said, the driver said he was coming down the hill about three miles an hour. Uh, he said the truck quit running and he couldn't steer it. And why he didn't stop back here, if he's going that slow, is beyond me. But when he gets to the bank, I can see where he's turned his wheel so he could steer before he goes into the bank. But, uh, you know, not being a truck driver, I can't. You know. They're trying to block the road here? Well, I don't know if they're trying to. It's obviously it is blocked, and no doubt. When, when did it happen here? I don't know. Uh, this is the first time we've got the TV here. He does it all the time. It's just the first time you've ever been caught. That's all. You interrupted a meeting that I didn't really want to be at. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, the, the crash. You want me to wait or you want me to wait? Let's try to get another filter up here. <laughs> well, it's start or what? What's the problem here? Though? It just quit. Like, What's that? It just quit. Are you the driver? Who's the driver? No, 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 no. What, what happened? <laughs> Well, I uh, just ran out of fuel. I guess the engine just cut out and I lost some steering. No power steering, so. I'm nice to stay on the road. Not much else. What's that? Do you mind talking to me? Well, I'll talk to you. I don't think you thought I'd use it. Well, why not? All right, well, all well, I know is what you saw when you got here. <laughs> Good motor, didn't make the I'm Yeah. I'm, I'm happy. Well, what, you were driving down, what happened? No, we were driving into the ranch. Arrived at the ranch about 8 o'clock this morning, and three of the rigs were parked beside the road on the right-hand side of the road with Rajneesh's sitting in them. The uh, front rig, the truck that is now jackknife, the hood was up on it, as though they uh, had engine trouble. My understanding is that... Uh, they were going down the hill three miles an hour and uh, didn't make the turn, but the uh, sheriff tells us they didn't attempt to make the turn according to the tracks. They were just parked alongside? Just them. parked, one right after the other. The truck and the jackknife leading it, the pickup in their tail. It's coming to town. Well, uh, they just sent for a fuel filter. Fuel filter? What, what, had, what did you want it to do here, David? Well, we wanted to accomplish a number of things. Uh, first of all, to, to complete the job, we uh, came out on September 10th to do when we were told to leave because of a trespass. What, what specifically do you want to find out there? Well, uh, we're most concerned about the tent structures that have gone up since September 10th when we came out last. Uh, we've issued a notice of violation on those, and we wanted to uh, get an exact count and, and look at the... Uh, the structure itself. Tell me about the notice, the notice of violation. Give me the big picture here. Uh, well, they have 15 days to, uh, to correct the, the problems. The structures are in violation as well as the use. You say the tents are not legal, is that what you're telling me? Yes. Right. And uh, we have not yet been contacted by the commune or the investment corporation. And they're the two that we sent notices to. Um, and we were going down today to get an exact count, if we could, of the number. We counted from our airfoil is about 640. We were, we were there. We also went down to look at some other things too. We, there were some uh, uh, permits that we had issued that, uh, and, and others we had objected to, and we wanted to check those. And uh, we wanted to look at development in the annex areas. What could it all mean? This today. No, no, no. Well, if you go down there, in fact, or when you get down there in those tents, you determine are on annex land. What, what's, what does it mean? Well, it means we will uh, issue citations and uh, and pursue whatever legal means we can to get them removed. Get the tents removed. Yes. Let me ask you another question. Those tents are 100 miles from the nearest town, sitting on a piece of deserted desert sagebrush. What's wrong with them being there? They're violation of zoning laws and we have to enforce Out in the middle our of the desert in violation of zoning laws. We have to, this is exclusive farm use zoning and we have to enforce our laws. A tent in the middle of the desert is in violation of zoning laws. Well, <laughs> yes. And it's more than a tent. Uh, it's just the way the laws are written. We need to enforce them equally. Well, not much longer. Yeah.
<laughs> Probably another 10 or 15 minutes. When did maybe. So you, you're on, your car's on that side of the truck. Huh? Yeah. It looks like it. Well, t tell me, besides the tents, what other stores, where else in the commune you're going to be looking at? Wanna... Well, in the, uh, the one, one, one. Well, there aren't any residential <laughs> Sorry, uh, yeah, just give me a laundry list of what structures, particular structures, are, are you considered this one question? Well, we've issued 47 citations on various buildings within the annexed areas, and we Namely? wanted to check those. and. Uh, Rajneesh Mandir is one. There's a factory uh, down toward Jefferson County, a factory building that hasn't been completed. Uh, the airport, the reception uh, building. All, all of these uh, things may be illegal. Yes, right. The airport may not be legal. The airport, we issued a uh, conditional use permit, but the, the new terminal building mm -hmm. was one that uh, was not approved in that conditional use permit. There are ways, there are ways to correct some of these violations. Uh, we just haven't been approached in those as yet. One last question since we still got the hand, still the camera here. Make the case for me. Why, even if it's a tent that's got a roof and a zipper and a heater in it, make the case for me why that should not be allowed to sit in a piece of sagebrush in the middle of the Central Oregon Desert. Well, it's a, it's a structure being used for residential purposes and those need, those things need approvals and they, they haven't gotten them yet. I mean, what, what harm is it doing anybody? they don't have approvals. And you could say that about anybody who'd want to build a house anywhere. What harm it really is it doing? Well, you need to go through the proper procedures and get the things approved. No matter how it silly it may done. sound. Well, it may sound silly to you, but it's, it's not silly. It's a very serious matter. It's a knick-knack, Paddywhack. Get the frog along. Were you, were you with these? Were you no. with it? No. What are you doing here? I was coming down from the city. Mm -hmm. Okay. Afternoon, okay. we'll come in and. What's the plan here, you guys? We're waiting for a fuel filter right now. It's on its way up. Pardon me? Waiting for a fuel filter. Why can't we just roll the truck out of the way? <laughs> you don't steer well. <laughs> you know, engine don't run, you don't steer them. Do you want to sit in there with 96,000 pounds behind you, brother? So, so you can't just roll it out of the way, huh? They don't, you can't steer them. You can't steer it unless you want to roll it all the way off the edge of the cliff, and maybe that would be advisable, but I wouldn't. Has this ever happened before? Oh, three times a week. You look at the state of the roads. <laughs> I mean, no, no, has this road. ever happened before? All with over me. the world. Yeah. No, no, here, at the ranch. Has this ever happened before? Yeah, sure. You've We've ditched trucks quit on the road. Have you ditched a truck like this on the road ever before? Sure. I ditched a van right here once time before. When is the last time it happened? <coughs> I don't know. Did July the 6th. <laughs> no, July the 4th is the last time I ditched a truck 14, on this road. 14, 12, was it? No, it must have been 1875. Yeah. I think my grandmother was driving, actually, at the time. No, she wasn't. No, it was my grand daughter. How about the scraper? The scraper, yeah. That was July 9th, yeah. 1976. Yeah. Yeah. Twice. Twice. Well, I think we tried dropping. So you're really getting in the way. We're trying to take some pictures here, and you're standing in the way of the lens. It doesn't slide. We did it off, and then we Sorry. What I'm seeing. If you drop the trailer right there, we're dealing with a little bit of an angle to take the contract off. Yeah. If we move it, if we move it at all, we're going to deal with hundreds of that we've ever had in this fucking life. I was going to be kidding. We're going to find some more. Mr. Ruby. Aye. Oh, God. OK. You're right. Everybody, you're right. I was on my way to the city of Rajneesh. Finally, what? I agreed to go to the city of Rajneesh with them. Sorry, Mom. <laughs> what? Okay, who did it? What I'm happened? I'm not even dressed for this. I thought my car was going to keep me warm. What are you going to do? Good. What's up? What's up? I was going to the city of Rajneesh. They wanted me to look at some uh, uh, some oh, stuff yeah. there. Good morning. Do you have to? I have to. 
All right. If you have to, I mean, I I'm here. To. Mitzi, do you want to, uh, pardon me, do you want to check? Uh, they're checking how people are. People are okay? Safe? Yeah. Okay, let's go. Go ahead. I heard something on the radio on the way up here, and I was going to turn back, and then they said there was bad accidents. So I said, I'll come and check out the people, how they are doing. According to the deputy sheriff who investigated this, this was not an accident. This is not an accident? Looks like an accident. I haven't been there yet. You just caught me right before it. Would you agree there's more than irony involved here? The fact that Van Der Rohe is due to visit within a few minutes and one uh, of your rigs jackknifes in the road in front of him? I think it's wonderful. He comes to know about the condition of the road. This, this is about 7,000 people living here day in and day out using this road in such a pathetic situation. She I mean, I saw incredible uh, potholes all the way up here. I was worried about my car being damaged. She gave you the courtesy of notifying you that he was going to visit here today, and he says, this is what I get. What, do, what does he get? An innocent uh, accident? Sheila, was this an accident? I don't know. I've just come here. What do you want me to do? I've just come. Let me see. Do you want to move? Let me see what, what it is. Yes. Sure, yeah. Have you seen it? I'm coming to I'm here. just glad Master Well, I hurt. hear that Mr. Dandaro says that this is what he gets for his courtesy. I, I don't understand it. What happened? Somebody, if the road was fixed, oh, yeah. what would happen? Master. You know, we can't do this. Oh, don't hit me with that thing. Be careful, you guys. Well, we don't know yet. When we try and move it, it may do. Oh, Jesus. How did you get this thing in control? <laughs> Gorilla arms. Sheer brute Gorilla. strength. <laughs> Sheer brute. Look at him. He's a beast. Well, you know, you have a day off this way. Freeze your bum off. We did not get shot. Well, we're hauling the county planning people down here. Yes. What, what's the... Tell me about the accident. Well, the accident is the uh, driver said that he truck engine quit. And he was going about three miles an hour. And for some reason, he got way over here. And he said he didn't have steering. When he gets to the bank, obviously, I can see where he's turning his wheels. If he's going three miles an hour, why he didn't stop way back here is beyond me. So you're telling me it was no accident? Oh, I'm not saying that. No, what I'm saying is that, uh, you know, I don't know why he didn't stop way back here. And if he can turn his wheels there, why couldn't he turn them here, if that's the case? I'm not. You know, I wasn't driving the truck. Have, let me ask you this. Have there ever been any accidents like this in this road before? I couldn't tell you. I've never investigated any down here. Like this is this. the first one you've seen like this? Well, yeah, to me this isn't really an, an accident. Uh, if it's a truck failure, which he claims it is, you know, uh, it just drove off too far to the side, it appears. Why he wasn't on that side, I don't know. But and They're blocking the road pretty effectively. Right? Oh, did. They did an excellent job of blocking the road. Couldn't have done it any better. What's the verdict, Sheila? Hmm? What's the verdict? Verdict is that I'm glad that the man's life is safe. And I don't give a shit about who, what people think about cynical uh, approach. Is this a They're joke or not? Are you joking to me? No, I'm not joking. I'm serious. This is my few people's lives is concerned here. This is no joke. This is no joke. I mean, these people's lives are in danger, and somebody wants to make a cynical comment and uh, judge it and abuse it? It's not right. But see, how is that letter written?
the back of the truck. Excellent. Gonna come back another day, or what's the plan here? Oh, I. You know the plan? You roll your window. Yeah, we'll Can you roll the window? No, I can't. <laughs> Sorry about that. What's, what's I, I'm sure they'll be back, won't you? Oh, yeah. Yes. They'll be back. Another day, or what? Yeah. Yes. Another day. Okay. Hopefully the road will be open. Pardon me? Hopefully the road will be open. When you come back, huh? Yes. Ready? Yep. Three, two, one. Apparently a court order and a 48-hour notice is not enough. The county planning director says he'll be back when the roads are clear. At Rajneesh Param, I'm Walden Kirsch, News 8. Take it again. <clears throat> Three, two, one. Apparently a 48-hour notice and a court order are not enough. The county planning director says he'll be back, but when the roads are clear. At Rajneesh Param, I'm Walden Kirsch, News 8. Three, two, one. Ma Anand Sheila says that nobody is living in those 640 tents anyway. But the county planning. Three, two, one. Ma Anand Sheila says that nobody is living in those 640 tents anyway. But the county planning director says he'll be back another day just to be sure. He'll come back another day. Three, three, two, one. Ma Anand Sheila says that nobody is living in those 640 tents anyway. But the county planning director says he'll come back another day just to be sure. Once more? Three, two, one. Ma Anand Sheila says that nobody is living in those 640 tents anyway, but the county planning director says he'll come back another day just to be sure.
something to this people. I hope I get to see. This is a beautiful place and I may never leave here. Wild wide, coast to coast, everybody should come and have a good time. Is that fair I'm getting? I hope everybody sees me. Look at this stomach. Oh, boy. That's right. I'm, I'm glad. I like to talk to warm up some people. It's protecting us. Well, the bum on the road, to say. When did you come? I came from Phoenix, Arizona. My name is Willie Walker. And how are you liking it here? Like fine. Good people. Good. When did you come? I got uh, about a week, week today. Great. And you're having a good time. That's right. Good. And for uh, you. it looked like it'd be we safe here. Any place else. We can walk the street here, yeah, no need to look in the bank. Who's gonna knock you in the head? We ain't got no dope around here to start with, but we don't want nothing either. That a boy. You know, they, they, they don't mind it because they, they are, uh, they've decided to do it. They're, they're not just a free ride, you know, a round trip ticket, supposedly. So I find, like I said, the last two uh, days of buses, the people have been quite, quite different than they were before. Mm. And like I said, I got here and, uh, well, the first, you know, they said, I, I figured that they were going to, you know, tell me about the religion, tell me about this. And, no one would tell me anything. <laughs> I had to go around asking about well, it, you know. And then I wanted to, talking, eh? yeah. So I, I wanted to find out who, who this guy was, uh, Bhagwan, you know. So I got to listen to him. It's not really a religion. It's just in his mouth. He says something, you know. Every time he opened his mouth before, he stopped talking. I guess, and I heard that the reason he stopped talking, he said he said it all. <laughs> and if you read some of his stuff, uh, every time every time he said something, you know, of course he's had a lot of jokes, but every time he said something, he said something. You know, it wasn't. Uh, uh, and I and I've read his books. You can go in. There's many books that he's written. And Tell me how you got the, how you how you came to, to begin to register people to vote and became the, the registrar out there. Well, the, the way I did that, um, I was told that by uh, at the pre last year press conference that you had over here that uh, this uh, Fawbush. Now I don't know this for a fact because I've read the articles from him. And reading the articles from, from what he says, I do not see him quoting, saying that at any time. But it, it's like the newspapers are, they're all hearsay. But then when it says, when his quotations, I, I look for those things. And in the quotations, only thing, street people, uh, and he doesn't say anything in these different places. It's all hearsay. Uh, like I told the people that call me from UPI, uh, I would like to meet the man. Uh, but when if a person tells me that I can't vote, I'm going to see, and they, and the people don't like that. I mean, you know, you're an American citizen, and if somebody tells you you can't vote, 
uh, I have people that I talk to, <laughs> you know, that's never voted before, and when I tell them that, well, this, uh, that, um, all I want you to do is register. Now, this gives you the opportunity to vote, to vote if you've been here 20 days. It gives you the opportunity to vote. Now, you don't have to vote, and I'm not telling you who to vote for. You'll go in a booth just like they do all over the country, and there'll be, uh, uh, you can either vote whatever, uh, Republican, Democrat, or Independent. That's what it says on the card. Well, the way, I, when I went around first, I went and talked to approximately 60 people. And out of the 60 people, I had 53 that wanted to register, okay, after I told them what was going on. And um, I f realized that when I went up to KD, which is the mayor here, he was the one that, that I know that would, you know, as a mayor, he would know about politics. So I asked him about the registration. He said, well, it, it would help me. You know, he could get somebody to type them out and do it the right way. So the next day I know there were some people uh, set up in Hasid. Mm -hmm. So you went to him rather than him coming to you? Yes, I went to him. Were there other registrars around before? No, there wasn't. You you had, so you're registering predominantly street people, as they're called, or referred to here? Well, yes, but I, but I have, uh, what I'm doing is uh, sending the people to where to be registered now. Before I was trying to do it myself, which uh, I filled out one card for a guy four different times because I did, I did it the wrong way. But uh, they know the right way to do it. If they move from one section to another, you have to register where you're staying. In other words, if they go from like Walt Whitman to Corona Grove, they have to change. You know, they have so to you're sort of recruiting them and then sending them down. Yes, yeah, sending them down. I'm just, and I'm not recruiting them as, as per se. I'm telling them that they have the right to do it and where they can have it done if they want to register. And like I said, they're under no obligation to vote whatsoever. They, they can register immediately on the day they arrive. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't talk to people as a rule when I'm working at registration when they first come in. I wait till I see them later, and I'll say, have you registered to vote? Mm -hmm. And uh, like I said, I, I tell them the facts that you don't have to, to uh, vote, but you can't vote if, you ha or if you're not registered. Yeah. So you know, it was Wayne Farbush predominantly that got you so angry in the first place that you decided to Yes, vote. well, the, the articles I was reading in, in the Oregonian and all these, that uh, it was hearsay, but like I said, I cannot say that the man has said anything derogatory that I've read. Now, I've heard people say that he said it, which is not under quotation, but anything he said, uh, I, 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 like I said, like I told him, I'd like to meet him and talk with him because he never can tell. I might be here, a person here that will get him votes if, it, if, he, if he says the right thing. But uh, I don't think, I think if he came here and, uh, and lived, which I'm sure he's not going to do, but if he lived with these people, he'll find that, that all the, they're not interested in, in changing the world. All they want to do they didn't ask me to become a sannyasi. Mm -hmm. I asked, you know, I, I want to know how I qualified and uh, how to qualify once that I, I had read Bhagwan's teachings. And I think that if, if the people in, in the country or, or the world would read his teachings, it's nothing to do with the religion. It's just being yourself and, and no st stealing, you know, no violence whatsoever, uh, no drugs. And, and when uh, I heard that uh, this Jerry Reed left here. Jerry told me when he, before he left here, he was trying to, he wanted to stay here, he wanted to be a writer here, and, and, you know, like he was on the news, I saw him, and he told me exactly what he was going to say before he left here. He said if he didn't get to write for the newspaper here, that he was going to really give them shit, you know. And the next, three days later, I see him on the news, and he was stuttering like hell here, and now he's not stuttering out there at all. Uh, he was on your other station. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right, Kevin, let's see. What, what do you find? You were registering for that, right? Everybody registering for Republican again? No, it's, un it's unreal that, uh... <laughs> well, they had a big block of them down in, in um, where was it? Antelope for a while. Antelope, Antelope. that's the city of Rajneesh oh, now. Yeah. Point. I like the way the news do things. It started out in the morning that all they did was people was asked to leave, and the buses came and got them. By the, by the 11 o'clock news, I was hilarious. They said they were held at gunpoint. Well, I, it's, it's, all in, it's all in perspective. You know, if you've got police standing around you, they've got guns. It's, you know, you're at gunpoint. It's no different. Police force is a police force, regardless of where you go. Well, what you've got there is somebody with a gun there standing around you. At gunpoint, no. I, you well, I think that, don't it. you think that would shock me? I mean, if I was an Oregonian, and I lived out here, and I you know, I'd reverse the situation, okay, and I was out there, and I saw the news clipping, and it said the men were with them. Yeah. But, uh, you understand what I'm saying? I, I would be upset if I was, a, you know, like I said, to me, to me not, I'm saying to me, that you say something wrong, but as a, what they do is, that, I guess, is to get people to listen, you know. And if you listen, and some of these people, I mean, well, they're, they're they figure, you, you're getting you're getting a lot of unstable people anyway, considering yeah. where you draw them from. And when you do take the most unstable, anybody that we bring here, 
I believe this now. This is my own opinion. It doesn't have anything to do with Rush Nish. Mm -hmm. But I believe that they, we should bring people here unless we do s send them back where they came from. Mm -hmm. Because a Coke. <laughs> <laughs> I don't drink Coke. Oh, okay. It needs to be a cup All of the fruit juice. juice. <laughs> Cappuccino, you're pretty buzzed on that. Easy. Yeah. Ready? Ready? We're rolling. Back there in the cafeteria is where the potential voters are registered. We weren't allowed to take any pictures back there. A spokesman for the Rajneesh says there's nothing at all sinister about it. It's just that the people who live here are tired of living in a punch bowl. They're tired of having everything they do photographed. Good. Let's do it again for posterity. I can't do it twice, Kevin. It just comes to me once. Okay, do it again anyway. All right. Back there in the cafeteria is where the potential voters are being registered. We weren't allowed to go... Nah. See, I screw up after that. Try it again. Back there in the cafeteria is where the potential voters are being registered. <laughs> I forgot what I was going to say. Back there in the cafeteria is where the potential voters are being registered. We weren't allowed to go back there to take any pictures. There's nothing sinister about it. A spokesman for the Rajneesh says it's just that the people who live here are tired of being photographed. Damn it. I didn't mean to say that. Try the other one. Mm -hmm. Back there in the cafeteria is where the potential... God, I'm going to lose it. Just one more. Okay. Back there in the cafeteria is where the potential voters are being registered. Okay. Back there in the cafeteria is where the potential voters are being registered. We weren't allowed to go back there to take any photographs, though. A spokesman for the Rajneesh says there's nothing, uh, nothing what? Okay. Sinister. Sinister. <laughs> nothing, conspirac nothing conspiratorial about it. Okay. No, sinister. It's easier. <laughs> There's fewer. It's no okay. Back there in the cafeteria is where the potential voters are being registered. We weren't allowed to go back there to take any pictures, though. A spokesman for the Rajneesh says there's nothing... Damn it. Back there in the cafeteria is where the potential voters are being registered. We weren't allowed to go back there to take any pictures, though. A spokesman for the Rajneesh says there's nothing... God <laughs> damn, I cannot say it. The potential voters are being registered over there at the cafeteria, but we weren't allowed to take any pictures of them. A spokesman for the Rajneesh says there's nothing conspiratorial about that. It's just that people here are tired of living in a fishbowl, tired of having everything they do photographed. That one was <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.